fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you on Tuesday, Feb 12. Probably my 5,000th day, 25 years. 60,000 hours. Here we are, going over the morning European Open again. Feb 12, 2019. Let's uh, let's take a look at what's going on. Quiet day yesterday all around. Uh, S and P's didn't do a lot. We were up at 20, down, closed at 09. Uh, bonds were yields were slightly higher. Dollar yen took a little fling uh, higher, which we profited from, uh, and it's still higher today. So on 10.58. We obviously have this news that the shutdown has been averted. As you can see, um, this thing flicked higher from 27 up to 65. That was uh, three hours ago. So we're kind of risk on here, right? Oil is half a percent higher, 52.68. See the long, long bond took a nice, nasty turn down. Finally, um, this looks like a very interesting double top now. For those of you who are trading uh, bonds, technically, um, but let's look at euro. We had this interesting, um, interesting print at 72 last night. Obviously, we have this low here from 28 November. Um, at 70, 71 they're saying. Uh, we also have this low here, 14 December at 69.8, let's call it 70. So now we're looking at this triple bottom with this little guy here down at 17, but this is an important moment for Euro, um, this 70 level. So we're going to keep a close eye on it. We've had one, two, three, four, five, six red days. I don't see any macro reason for this to change. Um, I guess we have China trade data Thursday, and then um, the next big macro event, it's going to be the minutes now that we have this uh, government shutdown averted. The problem with this six red days is it's tough to sell low ones in Euro, so you got to be careful uh, for those of you who are pure break traders you got to be careful selling 69's today um, because when the average true range is just going to be 35 or 40 pips you're already sort of 12 to 15 pips through uh, and unless there is uh, news out of Europe I mean we have mm, Ecofin meetings today, but that doesn't really mean much. We've got the German Buba president, Bundesbank President Weidmann. He speaks, but you know he's not going to say anything negative on the euro. I don't think um, he speaks 9 a.m. Swiss time. But this is a very interesting point, 112.78. And until we're until the bars tell us otherwise, this is on the 240 minute here. Uh, you need to be short this stuff. So, um, ideally, I think the best plan would be to sell 88s and then play around with it, uh, trade it as it gets through 70. Uh, but to each their own today. If you want to sell through 70 with a tight stop, that's fine. Probably won't work, but. It's not going to kill anybody, that style of trading. Uh, what we're going to do is try and sell between 80 and 88, get develop a core short, trade around an average, um, and then combine that with some Euro Yen sales. So as we've been talking, Euro Yen's not doing anything, but there's money to be made in Euro Yen on, on the short side. So you sell high ones, try and grab uh, buy some back increase your average uh, we don't think this is going to get through 125 
So we're right dead set in the middle at 72. You can sell between 75 and 85, try and grab some back between 65 and 75, keep core short on, rinse, repeat. I think we sold, we bought 58s and sold 68s four times yesterday in a dead market. Um, so, I mean, it's typically, we don't typically do this style of trading, but we are evolving a little bit as the ranges have decreased and we're just being more flexible. Um, and so this style has been has been paying for us in euro yen. Euro dollar will try somewhat similar. The liquidity is a little bit better, and, and so the ranges are a little bit more constricted these days. So you don't really get that sort of ten point rinse and repeat cycle four times the way you can in euro yen, but same type of, of methodology on this. We're going to sell high ones. We'll probably add if if and when we see 70 is going to break, we'll add some tactically. Again, uh, looking for a better average. Uh, and then at the end of the day, we, you know, our tactical book will just square. Uh, we'll remain core short euro yen. Um, and then just move forward. Let's look at dollar rand. Uh, we botched this yesterday. We were, we thought this thing might go a little bit lower before it went higher, but as typically with FX, um, it's, it's always, always does what, what it wants, right? Not what you want, does what it wants. So we had this big day yesterday. Uh, these green bars here, this is squeezing the flock, as we've talked about. This was a consensus trade uh, going into the year. You can see this is where it started. 1440, this big red bar, bang, sideways, lower, sideways, bang, 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 Goldman, Morgan Stanley, uh, all the private clients here in Switzerland, they're all long EM. Uh, no one did any due diligence on this. They just closed their eyes and did what they were told. Um, and then what's going to happen here, you know, they're all going to sort of just sort of take it in the ass here. This 200 day is important. Um, again, I'm a little bit tentative now. I don't want to buy high ones here. Uh, I will watch this closely. I will watch what Euro dollar is doing. I will watch uh, DXY, um, dollar strength in general. I don't know what's on the calendar in South Africa today, but we need to watch that as well. You can see. Uh, dollar index has broken through these recent highs, but we're still within the range, and, and it really doesn't get super important until we get through 97.74. Uh, so that's a percent away still. Uh, no drama there. Let's look at cable. I don't know why, but let's just look at it anyway. Looks like it's going down, which makes a lot of sense to us. Uh, we're not trading it too much. This level looks marginally important 128.30 um, I would just avoid cable pretty much sucks um, so I don't know I would avoid cable uh, and then let's, let's look at our uh, slutty little friend at Dollar Swiss uh, boy she really uh, did our heads in yesterday. Thank God we got paid in other currencies because I was in a very angry mood there this morning. Yes, this morning, yesterday's time. Uh, at this time in the morning yesterday. We jammed up to basically 101, which is a huge, huge resistance up there. Uh, and then just bottled it all the way back to one, all the way back to parity, but then we ground higher, and as we talked about, the number of daily closes above parity in dollar Swiss is something you really need to concern yourself with. All of this region between parity and 101, this is where everyone is hedging. Everyone in Switzerland, ABB, Nestle, uh, UBS, Credit Suisse, every time UBS sells a, a US, a NASDAQ trade to one of their customers, they have a dollar income. Think about it. There's so many dollars created in Switzerland. 
I could go on and on. I think five of the 20 biggest companies in the world are in Switzerland. Roche, Novartis, um, not to mention all the watchmakers, Rolex, and the like. A uh, lot of dollars to be hedged. So they're hedging right now. And as we close above one, I would say four days above one, all of a sudden you have to scratch your head and go, wait a minute. Somehow uh, the bulls look to be in control. And you'll see that from, from back here, November 17, right here, May 18, right here, July 18, right here, November 18, uh, the bulls never win, and they haven't won in years. If you if you want to take the monthly chart up, which I don't really want to do because we don't trade monthlies, but you can see this thing. It's 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 2000 since 2009 or 2010. We really can't get through this one region. Um, we did peak up to 103, 104 a couple of times, you know, 14 and 15, but then got slammed back down. This will be a very, very interesting trade through 103.20 or, or whatever these highs are. Um, because why is that? Because some of these hedgers will flinch, right? Some of the, you know, chief financial officers and really smart ass CEOs will be like, hey, why did we hedge? Let's unhedge. Uh, somebody told me Dollar Swiss is going to 110. Uh, and then you'll see the little bit of unwind plus hedge funds and plus dollar bulls will get involved if we get up here and there'll be some very good money to be made if we break this this high uh, but in order to have confidence on that you just have to watch this how many daily closes above parity are we going to get so far we've had one two this did not close above three today is going to be the fourth if we close above so let's keep in mind keep this in mind it's a bitch to trade nobody makes too much money off of it but every once in a while there's a setup that it's just irresistible uh, and we're still three percent from this irresistible moment it's definitely something to watch quickly one last thing we talked about Euro Aussie yesterday on Twitter we like this thing lower um, Technically, it's kind of been through these levels. I don't know, 159.30. Looks like we're making a lower low today and a lower high. Aussie turned up a little bit. We're back at 70.80. Um, Euro Aussie downside is kind of a sneaky way to be short euros, but it's a slippery bastard, so uh, be careful. All right, I feel like I'm babbling. Uh, good luck today. Uh, somebody out there make tons of money. I will uh, talk to you tomorrow. Ciao.